So we're going to pop this head off and that means taking some bolts off um, the exhaust to get down to here. This is where the separation between the block and the head is and where this gasket is. <laughs> So most of the time, I will be really, really thorough when I can. And this is one of those times where I'm not going to be as thorough as I normally would be. And I just wanted to say that right out of the gate. Because this is a situation where the whole machine is really not worth a lot of time and energy. Unfortunately, it just isn't. In a perfect world, they would all be worth, you know, saving. But they're not. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to pull the head with removing as few components as possible and as quickly as possible replace the broken components on the bench put it back together try it out so let's let's get started uh, over here on the intake box you've got a an evaporative line here that just takes gas fumes and puts it back into the intake pull that off there and then looks like an air box is held on by uh, screw there and a screw here or a nut. Pop that off. Okay. I am going to make sure that I put all these back where they came from. I'm hoping to not remove the whole carb, but I might have to. Uh, let's get the fuel line pulled off of there. cover is off. Intake. Uh, we're going to try. Let's see what we can do here. Do I have to pull that off? Yeah. I think I am going to have to pull the carb. All right. I didn't want to, but let's see if we can save these gaskets too. I don't know what parts came with the kit, but I got to rotate this carb to get these linkages off. So we're going to take it off. I'm going to be as gentle with the gaskets as I can. Since I'm not entirely sure they came with the head kit that I got. strange gasket it's like a plastic cover on one of these gaskets huh? We got a solenoid down at the bottom of the carb. We'll pop that off there. Slide this guy out. There. We'll just hang it over to the side for now. Good. Yeah. Got some wiring that's connected to the head. We'll leave it connected to the head. Whoa. That's a wobbly son of a bitch. Jeez. Um, I'll pop this wiring up off the block. So this can all stay connected here. Spark plug wire. Yep. Yep. And I think probably the easiest thing to do is just get this wiring out of the way because it's just one extra bolt. Strange gasket. Man, that's weird. All right. 
I actually haven't focused much on these engines because I'm not really into them. So the equipment that I buy, I don't typically have this engine on because I don't like them. And they come on the lower grade machines anyway. So I'm kind of learning as I go too. Okay, that stuff's out of the way. We're going to separate between here and here. So anything behind it has got to go. Anything that's connecting this to that has got to go. There's a heat shield here, but it looks like to me that it's connected back to the head on both sides. So we'll just leave that connected. Let's uh, get this rocker arm out of here and this push rod on the intake. I've already loosened it up, so I can just pop it out of the way, pull the push rod out. This one's got some wear here, but that's pretty normal. It's nice and shiny. See how shiny it is? And that's just where it's wearing against this guide. You can see the difference between the two now. Let's see how bent that one is. Top one's the intake, bottom one is the exhaust. If I rotate it, you can probably see the hump in the. Yep. And you can see that exhaust is the bottom one, the bent one's the bottom one. It's like, that's how bent it is. So, nice heavy duty. Aluminum push rods, huh? So I'm just going to leave these connected here for now. They're not hurting anything. Uh, but when we slide the head forward, you know, the push rods got to be out. So, okay, now the exhaust. We've got intake. We've got ignition. We've got fuel. Now we're onto exhausts. We got a guy here. A little guy here. And then on this side, we got the exhaust pipe running up into here, and there's two bolts that hold on the exhaust over here. So, switch up there, you can see. So, I'm working with a pair of Torx. Gasket, another bolt. So this is what we've removed so far. Um, bunch of bolts. Now we're gonna go pull this head off. Let's see what size jobs we're using here. What you got? Probably thirteens. Yeah, thirteens. get it to pop off actually these um these nylon ones are even better oh here it goes there you go so since i uh have not pulled one of these before i'm going to make sure that all the bolts are the same length before i pull them out of the head Looks like uh, the one on the bottom left here has an additional washer on it. The other ones are all the same. No washer, no washer, no washer. And the top three look like they're all the same length. And then the bottom three this one, same length, it just has a washer on this side, and then that one, and that one, yeah, they all look like the same length. Alright, let's go take it over to the bench and take a look at it. 
Okay, we've got the head over here on the bench. And before we pull these valves out to take a look at what's going on, I'm going to show you. This is the intake side. So on the intake, this is where the card bolted on. You can see that guide, which is the, the, the real shiny small part is the valve stem. And above it is the guide. It's sticking into the intake port right there. Um, you know, half an inch or so. So that's the intake. We didn't have any problems with that one. The exhaust is over here. And you can see the stem, but you can't see the guide anywhere. Hmm. So, let's pop these out and see if we can get that guide to move back where we want it to be. Oh, this is going to be fun. Am I going to be able to get to that? Let's see. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Oh, boy. That's going to be real fun. Dang, that's a tall freaking head. Yeah, I'll probably just get enough of it to compress it. Let's see. I'm gonna grab the keeper. You know, it helps when you're um, rotating a thing. If uh, you rotate the right direction. Like, for the work you're doing, that kind of helps. Alright, now we're bottomed out there. Can I get the keeper off? Maybe. Maybe not. Bottomed out on the head right there. There's a little keeper. I'm going to try to get him out of there. Yeah, we'll get them out. There we go. Container. Spring. And now the valve. Ooh. Don't wanna, mm, don't wanna come out, does it? So this is, you don't wanna force this. Cause you don't wanna destroy that seat to try and pull that valve out of there. Or that uh, guide, trying to pull the valve out. So, I think we got new valves. What I'll probably do is come over here with a file and clean that up a little bit so I can get that to fall out of there without chewing up the the guide. You can see this cooked hot stuff there. It's definitely gotten hot right there. Let's see. I'm not taking much off. I'm just Taking a little bit of the burr. A stranger would be a burr there, but. Oh, see? There it goes. Bloop. So it might be there. Eh, it doesn't look bad. I think we got new valves coming now, so. There's our exhaust valve. Nothing really to note there. I'm gonna go ahead and take the intake out too. I think, actually, before we go that far, maybe I don't have to. I'm just take a look at the parts we got. 
I got these from OPE Engines. Uh, they got great selection of parts for things like this. So this is the kit I got for just for the head. Whoa! Got a bunch of stuff in there. Okay. Mm. New head bolts and everything. Okay, so there's two kits I got. This is a sweet kit. So it was about 65 bucks ish for shipping. Um, I got this one here, which is a 208401-01-S. That's like the head kit, the head gasket kit. Comes with new bolts and washers, gaskets. Uh, this guy is a 2075539-S. And this is the uh, basically a valve kit, more or less. It's got push rods, rocker arms, um, all that kind of good stuff. So, I guess uh, while we're here, we'll put a new valve in it on the intake side. I'm gonna get it out of there anyway. We don't have to, but it'll be easier. It'll be easier to work on this guide with that not in the way. So we'll just take it out. Again, we're not doing a super thorough job here. We're just trying to, with the bare minimum of parts and labor, get this back to being a thing again. Watch your eyeballs. Okay. Boop. So that's intake, that's exhaust. Uh, let's see what we got in here. Hmm, that doesn't want to go either, huh? That one's got a seal to go through, though. So, we'll give that one a little deburring. Huh. I wonder if it's because of the d design of those keepers. That might be it. They're not a tapered seat keeper, like um, most engines. They're just a flat one. Yeah. There's our intake valve. Not too bad. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm wondering if part of the reason that they're a little finicky when they come out is because the keeper seat right there is just flat instead of well no I guess it's flat on all valves isn't it I don't know I wonder if it's because they use these keepers instead that's all I'm trying to say okay um now I don't know how deep this valve guide is supposed to be in there um, but if you look, actually, you can look inside the chamber now and see how far it's moved. Like, it's actually recessed. It's barely, barely in there. There's the intake. The exhaust. So let's see if we can even get it to move right now. And maybe, so I don't booger up the thing. Yeah, that'll just mushroom the hell out of it. I don't want to do that. Let's just see how easy it's going to move. <laughs> it's already moved quite a bit yeah that was not a good fit just with that little nylon hammer it's already moved like a bunch i'm wondering if we can tell if there's any witness mark here from where it originally sat so to me i mean it almost looks like it was And that's hard to say how far that should be done in there. And if we look at this one, just seal up off there. Yeah, if that one's any indication, it should 
probably be pretty close to that. So we'll keep going. Wow, that's loose. That's just crazy, man. That's just freaking nuts. So, where are we at here? We can see clean material yet. Yeah, I'm looking for any kind of witness mark in there. Um, I'm actually going to look at the manual for the motor and see what that depth should be. I don't want to go this far and have it just be almost right. I want to get this right. So, Okay, so I went and looked at the service manual. Kohler's got all this stuff really easy to find. They make it all available for you. And I checked the depth of the guide for the intake and the exhaust. They are different. The exhaust wants to be a little less into the head, I'm assuming, so that the guide has a chance to dissipate the heat into the cylinder head. The exhaust wants to be 10.2 millimeters from, from this face to here. So I just took a straight edge across the head like that. I'm sorry, the exhaust is 6.2. And the intake is 10.2. So take a feeler gauge in here. Let's see if I can do this on camera. And measure from the top of the valve guide to the straight edge. And do the same thing for both of them until you get the value. The uh, intake. Exhaust. So the exhaust is 6.2 millimeters from the face of the valve cover seat to the top of the guide. And the intake is a little deeper, a little further in at 10.2 millimeters down in there. So those are set. Now I'm going to go around and peen both of them. The intake had not moved, but the exhaust did. Uh, but just in the interest of making sure we don't have to go back in. I'm going to give it a tappy tap. So let me see if I can get this set up in the vise. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe not. Actually, that right there is pretty solid. I could probably deal with that if I clamp it there. I know. I'm being lazy and not taking that shield off. I'm going to take a, a punch and a hamlet and go right around the top of the top of the head, right next to the valve guide. Give it some tappies. I'll show you this one. So we're basically just creating divots all around here. There is one on this side, you can see it. Yeah. yeah. Somewhat symmetrically. Get as many of them in there as you can to get it to squishy. And do the same thing. That was the intake. Here's the exhaust. I'm going to go back around and give them all another good love tap. Especially the exhaust, since we know it's the one that wanted to move. And theoretically, there should be no force on these, as long as the valve doesn't stick in the guide there should be no force pulling or pushing on this it should just be a guide so go back around on the intake
All right. So now you can see got a ring of stuff around them. It's basically mushrooming that material and causing it to push into the guides so they don't move. Now, we can take our valves and make sure they still move in the guides nice and freely. No rough spots or anything. That one's got a little rough spot in it. Right at the top, huh? Yeah, he's got a little rough spot. Come on, buddy. I'm not forcing the valve in. I'm just trying to open up the end of it. Here. Once I start feeling it break free, I'm just going to go easy with it. Come on. There we go. There we go. All right. So everything moves like it should. Nothing funky there. So now we start the reassembly process.